EC3 connector soldering day today. Um, I'm going to be soldering this male uh, EC3 connector to um, an ESC for the female end that's on the battery pack. Uh, the battery end has the female uh, bullet in it and the male end has the obviously the male bullet. Um, the, the male uh, EC3 however is the larger of the two connectors that slides over the, uh, the female one. Um, and this is exactly the same, same procedure here if you were doing the larger EC5 uh, connectors or the little tiny EC2s. Uh, this is the same thing, they all use the bullets that snap into the connectors. No heat shrink is required for insulation uh, because the, connect, uh, the, the pin is nicely um, recessed inside the connector and no exposed wiring should be showing. So what I like to do with these, um, here's our male pin, um, I like to insert it into a female pin and then mount it in something to hold it nice and sturdy. I use my little drill press vise here, you could use anything, the drill press vise though it's got lots of mass so it holds things really steady. I usually mount the pin kind of angled at a 45 degree angle and that way the solder won't flow out. Now I'm using my soldering uh, iron for this, for my soldering station. This is a 70 watt station. Uh, it's big enough for this wire. This is 14 gauge. If the wire was much larger, maybe 12 or large, bigger, this probably wouldn't have enough heat output and I'd have to switch to my uh, gun. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is fill the little pin up, probably about halfway with solder. I don't know if I mentioned, but I've got the soldering station here set to 400 Celsius, which is quite a bit warmer than normal. I have usually around 350 for soldering, you know, circuit boards and stuff. But again, this is going to be pulling a lot of heat out of the iron. So I've set it uh, hotter than normal. So there we filled it, you know, about halfway up. It's got a nice layer of rosin in it. This is a, a 6040 again, rosin core solder. Uh, now, here's our ESC. Doesn't really matter which pin you do first. Um, again, the importance of having a good tinned uh, wire end is critical here. You want the solder to have penetrated well into all the strands so you've got a good strong mechanical connection when you make it, not just electrical connection. As far as the distance on the wire uh, that you want stripped and tinned, uh, you basically want it so all that, all, this, uh, all the tinned end completely bottoms out and disappears into the pin. I don't know if you can see that, I'll try to let's see if we can focus in on here. But just long enough so it bottoms out in the pin and the insulation comes pretty much to the end of the, uh, the pin. And that, because if the insulation was back any further, then you'd have exposed wiring out the end of your connector. So, short potential. So now that we've got that in there, uh, I'm just going to add a little more solder to the uh, to the wire here. Again, if you have solder on the tip, between the tip and the component, you've got better heat transfer. So there, I've got a nice little dollop of solder on the wire and inside the pin. Keep our tip clean. And we'll just put it in and apply heat. And as I'm doing this, I'm pushing down on the wire, not too hard, but just enough. So as the heat migrates through the wire into the solder and the pin, it will drop in. There we go. Now, there's a problem here, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a little dollop of solder on the edge of the pin. Uh, it's not in this little, this little recess in the center of the pin, which is good, because that's what locks the pin into the housing. But these pins have a very, uh, very tight fit into the actual connector housing, so that uh, 
that dollop of solder here, this little bubble of solder on the pin, will prevent it from sliding all the way in. So I'm just going to get out the soldering iron here and just knock that off. Just melt that off, spread it. There. Now, while this is still warm, now when there's some rosin on on here, you might want to wipe that off. Get some ooh, get some electrical contact cleaner or something. Isopropanol will work just to get any rosin off of the uh, the pin. And now you just have to figure out which one of these to. Fit. So you've got, so this is the uh, the male connector. You want to make, there's a plus and a minus. So this is the minus wire we're doing. And we're just going to push it in there like so. And just got a flat bladed screwdriver. And now you just rest the pin face down. Get your small flat bladed screwdriver on the back of the pin and punch it in. And you'll hear it snap, and then you know it's locked. The first time I didn't get that snap and it wasn't locked. And as you can see, the uh, the wire is nicely, it's, it goes down inside the connector housing, so there's no short potential. So I'm gonna do the uh, positive here. I'll just fast forward through this one. And there we go, that one's done too. Pins, wires nicely recessed down inside the connector. Actually, the black one isn't all the way down yet. There we go. Now, when you see them, the, the end of the pin should be almost flush with the end of the connector. So that's another way to tell you've got them locked in place. And then, yeah, give them a good yank. Double check the positives going to the positive of the connector housing, uh, negative to the negative. Now, a couple of, couple of things to mention here. Um, I did both of those kind of at the same time. If you were to do one on a battery, uh, you would want to have one wire insulated while you do the other one because you don't want any short potential. So you tape off or put heat shrink over the one wire do the one side, you know, once it's in the plug, then it's insulated, and then you can take the wire or the insulation off the other wire to solder the other pin on and, you know, snap it into the plug. Now, if you ever have to get these out, what I do is I use my vise again, and I open it up just so the shoulder of the connector is supported by the edge of the vise. So the wires are free to move, but the edge of the pin, or the edge of the connector, is supported. And then I just get take a small drift punch, get my hammer, and give it a whack. And that'll, you know, it'll snap the pin out. Um, same thing if you were to do the female end on a battery. Again, just have the vise. You know, you don't want it loose tight right out across from the, you don't want it tight on the wires, but you want it, you know, in enough so the edge of the connector is supported. Small drift, just uh, small enough that it fits inside the female bullet. Tap her out. And you do the same. EC5s are, a, the, the connectors are held in a lot tighter. Uh, one thing you can try uh, a lot of times I bust these up trying to get the pins out once they're snapped in. But, uh, you know, one thing that helps if you've got a heat gun or something, you know, just heat the plug up slightly. You don't want to melt it or turn it into spaghetti, but just heat it up to soften the plastic and then usually that pin will come out a little bit easier. 
So that's kind of the EC series of connector soldering. Hope that helped.